Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Steven. So I wanted to do a video on the Rode Active Suspension System that's been on the Tundra for about a year. I get a lot of comments on the Anderson weight distribution hitch video that I did and also the Tundra towing video that I did and I'll put links to those in the description about payload, right? So towing a travel trailer about a thousand pounds tongue weight on a half ton truck, how does that work out? And there's a lot of factors that are included. Um, that have to do with the weight distribution hitch and overall just how does the Tundra handle that weight and I've talked about um, Get a lot of suggestions on on solutions, and I love those comments. Please keep those coming But I figured it was about time to do a review of the road active suspension that's been on the Tundra So uh, stick with me all that coming up right now So we'll start out with just an overall shot of the Tundra and how it sits um, if you've looked at some of my other videos, you'll know that this has an Elka suspension system on it. It's basically a two and a half inch, or it's set, it's coilovers, but it's set at two and a half in the front. And prior to the RAS system there, I had installed a one inch max track shackle in the back. So it was sitting pretty darn close to level before. So stepping back here, you can kind of get an idea of how it sits now. There is a little bit of rake, not as much as they come with stock. I'd say half to three quarters of an inch rake up towards the back. I like the way it sits like this and it's better for when you put a load on the back, it levels out pretty well. So the RAS as it sits probably lifted the back about a half inch from, from where it was. It was, all, darn, it was almost perfectly level before and it's probably about half inch to three quarters higher in the back. But I quite like how it sits like I mentioned, and I think uh, overall, once I started using this for towing more often, uh, it's, a good, it's a good stance for it to have. Okay, so I've taken the wheel off to get a better view here. Uh, this isn't an installation video, but I will show you a few unique things to at least my installation. Of course, remember yours might vary. I've got the Elka kit on here. This is the HD kit. So there's two offered for this truck, a standard and the HD. This is the HD. I think it just has a little bit larger coil. And in other install videos, there's multiple spots where you can place the bolt through. In the Tundra, at least in my case, it would only go through on that very last, that very last setting there. So you just put the bolt through there. There's a couple little bushings and a sleeve and then just basically a nut on the other side. And on the Tundra, in the instructions, it hooks to the shackle in the back and the bottom right there. I don't know how well that's going to zoom in. But luckily in my case, I have an extended shackle, so I did not have to separate the shackle. If you have a stock truck, you will have to pull one side of that shackle off and slide that across that way. In my case, it just slid right over the top, so I had the extra clearance. For my installation, I used a mixture between the white and the black spacer. So the white spacer, they will have you put between the coils. When that fits, after you tighten this, this nut up to pull on, put tension on this coil, when that fits, that's 20% capacity increase. Now you can tighten that up further to where the black spacer fits and that will be a 45 or 40% 40 increase in the weight capacity. I didn't want this to be too stiff, so I just found a happy medium. I think I might have used a nickel <laughs> for the spacing. But like I said, it ended up raising the truck about a half inch in the back as it sits here. So like I said, a little bit over 20, less than the 40, so I would estimate it's right about maybe 30% right around there. And that has worked well. It's handled the weight of the camper very well. Part of the reason I went with the RAS kit and not like an airbag is I didn't want to deal with running airlines and, you know, having to pump those up, take those out. And I also, you know, with this, this truck, I've got it set up to where I like to go off road with it to some degree and also drive it around. So it serves all these different uses. And I was afraid with the airbags that it would really stiffen up the ride on those. And so that's why I went away from airbags. Another option is that Timbrin bump spacer, basically an extended bump stop. Uh, really wanted to decide against that. Basically it would ride the same until it hits here and then it's almost like 
you know, riding on the bump stop. I understand it might be a little bit softer or, or that type of thing. But basically, if you put a heavy trailer on it with that extended timber and bump stop, there might be a spring in there. You know, I'm not, I don't have that, so I can't talk too much about it. But I was really worried it would be a pretty harsh ride once it was actually resting on that with the weight of the trailer. So this, this works well. This takes up, um, makes it the truck handle the weight better. It does not affect the daily drive too much. You will notice with unloaded weight, it is a little bit stiffer. It's a little bit higher spring rate. Some people prefer that in the Tundra platform. It does take away some of the side to side lean you might get. Although with this suspension that I have on here, that was well controlled anyway. I've got it dialed in with the uh, adjuster knobs. But a lot of people say, if you put these on, you won't feel like you need a sway bar. And these trucks don't come with a sway bar. There is a TRD sway bar you can add, but you know, sway bars limit your articulation in off-road situations. So, you know, my goal is to have as much travel as possible, but still be able to handle the weight of the trailer. And that's a compromise, right? Anything you do to handle the weight is going to stiffen up the suspension to some degree. So this looked like the best compromise. And what I liked about this is I can adjust it. If I'm finding that it's not performing how I want, I can tighten it up. Or if I find that it's too stiff, I can loosen it down. And then combination with the Elka suspension, I can really dial this in. And I've got it pretty well set now. If you reference back to my earlier videos, the Tundra towing video did not have the RAS kit on it. And you can kind of see how it sat then. And I've also done some dialing in of that Anderson hitch. The kit with the Anderson hitch does have the RAS kit kit on it or the video with the Anderson hitch does have the RAS kit on there so you can kind of see a difference in where it sits there I also adjusted the height of the hitch and I've done some other things but it's definitely a noticeable difference in how it tows and handles the load with the RAS kit it's more stable it doesn't wallow around not that it did before it actually this Tundra really towed quite well the only thing I was trying to get past was kind of the sag in the back and the Anderson does leave some things to be desired as far as its capability for handling or distributing the weight back to the front axle. It doesn't do as well as some of the more traditional setups. So to supplement that RES kit, it's worked out quite well. Like I said, not an installation video, but you can kind of see how the HD kit looks on the Tundra. Very simple install. When you install it, you don't want to lift it up by the axle like I have here. I'm just doing this for the video. You have to lift it by the frame so the so the leaf springs can rest and and then you can set your proper spring rate at, at that platform or that level. So overall, RAS has been a great addition to the truck. It's not a heavy solution, which I'm always trying to keep an eye on payload and weight. So anything that you add to the truck, such as this, maybe weighs 50 pounds, will reduce your payload to some degree, even though it won't make you handle the the weight in the back better. Down the road, I may look at getting a different hitch setup, but I will likely still keep the RAS kit. Like I said, it's I've gotten used to the spring rate and I kind of like how the truck is riding just a half inch higher in the back. And I think it, it turns the leaf spring and suspension a little bit more active. And I think that's why they call it road active. It just handles a bit better and I can really dial it in with that suspension. Toes better, corners better. You will notice it's a little bit firm, more higher spring rate, a little more firm like speed bumps, city driving, that type of thing. And this truck has E-rated Toyo AT3s on it. So not quite as soft as the P-rated tires that they put on factory, more of a, an off-road tire and rated for heavier, much heavier loads and towing. So. The tires are actually a, a big factor as well. That combined with the Elka, the RAS system in the back here, it, it really complements the truck quite well. So if you tow with a half ton, a travel trailer, this might be something you wanna consider. There are obviously other options out there. You've got Timberin, you've got airbags. Everybody's got their own you know, preferences, but this is a relatively simple install you can do in your driveway. It works pretty well. You can adjust it. You know, I think with the Timberins, you're kind of stuck with, with what you have. Obviously airbags, you can adjust the pressure, but from what I've read, airbags will limit your downward travel unless you do the cradle setup on those. And Timberins will limit your up travel. So this is the only one that really 
allows your suspension to travel as designed, but it does increase the spring rate a little bit. And you'll have to be aware that it's a compromise for, for towing around heavier things. So real quick before I wrap up here, I did get a comment on one of my uh, review videos with a bulleted list of items that someone wants to see. Not really how I do it, but for those of you that want that type of content, I made a quick list <laughs> and maybe that'll help you out. So pros, let's go over the pros of this real quick. It's a simple installation. You can do it with your basic hand tools. You don't need a lift or anything like that. You can throw it up on jacks and, and be done with it. It's a simple design. It doesn't require like airlines or anything like that. You just kind of set it on there and you forget about it once you've got it dialed in. Um, another pro is it uh, still allows for your full suspension travel, right? You can still get all the way to your up travel, all the way to your down travel. You don't have to mess with anything. And obviously the increased load handling as it's designed to do. Um, some adjustability, I, I think that's still a pro. You can go in there and you can adjust the coil either higher, you know, stiffer or softer, and then that'll affect how it handles the load capacity. It's limited because you've got to actually take your wheel off and go in there and wrench on the thing. So um, that would also be a con is a limited adjustability, which is a great segue into the cons of this product. Um, it's not as precise as airbag. So if you're someone that, you know, loads up varying different loads all the time and you want that truck to sit perfectly level, you need that variability to be able to put the different air pressures in the airbags. This isn't going to be that solution. It would just be too much work to adjust this for every single load. You'd have to take the wheels off and et cetera. It wouldn't be a good solution for you. Um, a static increase in ride height, that might be a con for some people. This truck is about, like I said, half inch to three quarters taller, set at about 30% with the RAS system. I like how it sits, it doesn't bother me, but someone else might have it perfectly level and not like that little bit of rake that it's gonna add to the truck. It, it will lift the back of the truck some. Another con is it's limited to a traditional leaf spring uh, rear suspension design. So new Tundra owners, the third gens with the coils, not going to or the coils and the links it's not going to work for you and i believe uh, dodge rams not going to work for those as well so you have to have a traditional leaf spring design for this to even be viable for you um would i recommend absolutely for this truck it's a perfect solution well it's not perfect but like i said compromise it's a great solution and it's absolutely one i would purchase again so would i recommend yes would i purchase again yes